Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Krakoff, a naturopath and pharmacist at Johnson Compounding and Wellness Center in Waltham. We specialize in custom compounding and helping our clients obtain the best health they can naturally. I would like to welcome you to the first edition of Staying Healthy Naturally. This is going to be a show that focuses on natural ways to help you achieve optimum health and wellness. Today's show is going to be on colds and flu. We're entering into that season now. I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Sarah Byrne, a family physician at Visions Healthcare in Dedham. And Dr. Byrne, thanks so much for joining us today. And before we jump into cold and flu, could you tell us a little bit about your practice and mm -hmm. your setting? Sure, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm a primary care doctor, so I see patients from birth, basically birth to death, um, all ages, and I practice at a, a Visions Healthcare. So in addition to primary care, we also do something called functional medicine, um, which is just sort of a different approach to um, patients and wellness and health. Um, we look at different aspects of the body and trying to help the body function optimally. So. Um, a good examples, maybe instead of looking at one problem in you know 10 minutes or something that you have at the time, we try to spend more time with patients, really look at their entire you know um, person and wellness and all aspects of their health, and hopefully help people feel a lot better. <laughs> and that's excellent, and that really fits into what we do over at Johnson's mm -hmm. in that you're not just what can I do to suppress a symptom; it's mm -hmm. more spending the time and digging into mm -hmm. the why behind the problem, because if you fix the why, right. usually three or four different problems mm -hmm. get better. That's true. Okay. <laughs> um, we hear a lot about cold and flu and how to protect mm -hmm. ourselves. And one of the things I get a lot of questions is people come in and say, how do I know if I have a cold or mm -hmm. the flu? What are some of the differences? Sure. Um, so a typical cold is going to be not as severe as the flu. So colds can be many, many different viruses cause a cold. Yeah. Um, I'm sure everybody out there has had one. <laughs> and typically you might start with maybe a little bit of a sore throat, some runny nose, congestion, maybe develop a cough. Most of the time it's fairly mild um, and other than some lingering mild symptoms, you know, maybe lasts for a week or two at the most. Um, influenza uh, virus causes the, the flu, so the actual right. flu, tends to be a bit more severe. So um, symptoms that you might uh, have with the flu, especially the achiness, you know, high fever, chills, really pretty knocked Every out. Every joint aches. Everything aches. You just want to stay in bed. Not really something, you know, I'll just go to work today. You're really um, down for the count, typically with the flu. Um, maybe headaches, so, um, and it tends to come on a little bit more rapidly than a, than a cold that kind of creeps up on you. So if one day you're good, next day you feel pretty crummy um, with those symptoms, could be Probably the flu. The flu. And what a lot of people don't realize is you're contagious mm -hmm. before you're symptomatic and That's even true. after it mm -hmm. hits. So one of the things a lot of companies were finding are doing is it used to be if you weren't in the hospital or God forbid <laughs> dead, you're supposed to go to work. Yeah. Now a lot of companies are saying if you don't feel well, mm. stay home, get some rest because usually then you're only down for a day or two instead of the week or 10 days and you're not right. infecting all your coworkers. Right. That's wise to only have one person out versus the entire How office. You, Probably, yeah. So. Um, another thing that, for most of us, cold and flu is just an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You know, work gets backed up. We mm -hmm. can't take care of the kids or whatever. But for certain groups of the population, it can be mm -hmm. deadly. Whether mm -hmm. it be the flu or a severe cold, mm -hmm. what group should really be careful and really? follow what's going on because mm -hmm. it could be dangerous. So we think about uh, groups of people whose immune system isn't as robust as other people. Um, so infants or really small kids are maybe more susceptible, um, pregnant women, um, elderly people. Uh, I, I want to say maybe 90% of people who, who actually die from influenza um, are over 65. So it's going to be kind of an older population. Um, also people who have different health problems. So if you um, have diabetes, your immune system is not as robust as somebody without. Um, also people with lung problems like asthma or um, COPD, you know, heart problems. So really chronic illnesses um, 
are going to make someone a little bit more susceptible. Okay. So the healthier we can stay, the right. better chance we'll have of not having a problem. And there are a lot of things we can do to boost the immune system. Um, there's a lot of publicity now. There's been literature for years, and it's finally making it mainstream about probiotics mm. and how healthy they are. And can you talk to our viewers about how a probiotic can help us? Sure. So if you think about um, our our digestive system, so yeah. how do how would viruses or bacteria enter the body? So our skin is pretty good at you know most of the time protecting most of our body. So ways that these microbes can get in, either you breathe them in or orally. So. Um, what, what we think about is how our, our gut helps out. And say the microbes come in through, you know, you touch something, somebody coughed on it, and you put it into your mouth, and then, you know, you swallow it, goes down your digestive tract. So our digestive tract actually has a huge percentage of our immune cells. So, you know, a big part of our immune system is, is in the gut. They say about 60% It's of a our, huge yeah. amount. So, you know, normally the, I kind of describe what their function is, is say, you know, you introduce a bacteria. Well, that's something from the outside world. You obviously don't want to just let into your body willy nilly. So its job is to really decide what's friend and what's foe. And it's designed to do that. And so um, some of the functions that it has, it can, you know, when bacteria enter the body, it can help to, if they're making toxins, it can neutralize those toxins. Um, it can help um, maybe compete for um, nutrients. And so it elbows out some of the, the bad stuff that shouldn't be there. It's going to produce things that help boost the immune system, um, like antibodies, which are things that help to tag the, the bad stuff, the microbes, and yeah. so that your immune system can clear them out. So it actually does, does a lot. <laughs> oh, definitely. And each of the different bacteria, have a, have a, the healthy bacteria have a specific mm -hmm. function. And I like to use an analogy almost like a lawn. If you take care of the soil mm -hmm. so the environment is right and you put down some grass seed, it keeps the weeds at check. Exactly. And so by That's keeping good the good bacteria <laughs> in there, it helps keep the candida and some of the opportunistic mm -hmm. organisms or parasites mm. at bay, which is very important. And there's a million probiotics out mm -hmm. there. And very overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. And any tips on how to choose mm -hmm. a good probiotic? So I would say you want to um, go somewhere that is a reputable place. So if you want somebody else to do the work for you, you know, you're going to pick maybe a health food store, someone who's going to be a little bit more conscious about what types of products that they have in, you know, that they're selling. Um, you're going to, probiotics come from anywhere from, you know, some millions of species to 200 billion or more. So there's a huge range. That sounds kind of weird, but you, you know, you want at least, you know, um, I tell people 15 to 20 billion would be a good amount and to look for. And multiple strains. You don't yeah. want to load up just on exactly. one of the lactobacillus or one of the bifido. Exactly. All right. And people look, a concern, a lot of questions we get is they're in the refrigerator. Do I have to keep them in the refrigerator? Mm. The, we found the, ex, the studies show the excessive heat is what bothers them. Right. And so it, it, if you're going on vacation, take enough. You don't have to worry about having it iced the whole way. Just don't leave it in the car in the sun down in Florida <laughs> this time of year. 